Welcome back to day 25 and 26 of the Stardew Valley Min Max and 100% Perfection Guide, where we are trying to earn as much money as possible in as little time as possible and achieve the perfection goals as soon as possible. Today, we're continuing our iridium farming and are going to make one final push in Skull Cavern for this spring so we can afford 640 starfruit crops this summer. Next time, we will prepare our field so it is ready for the first of summer to have the seeds planted. Last time in Skull Cavern, we did get ourselves a good amount of iridium. Looks like we got 130 iridium ore, some rubies, diamonds, a bunch of gold and iron, and so that's pretty good. Let's get started, let's check the TV, and we've got ourselves a good humor luck day today. So that's always nice, we'll have a little bit more luck mining in Skull Cavern today. We're going to smelt everything real quick, grab that jade from the crystallarium. On Sunday, we'll be able to trade our jade in for staircases, which is great. Grab the mushrooms. Again, every extra little profit is nice, so we'll always try to check our mushrooms when we remember. Today is Thursday, so we will need to stop at Sandy's Desert Oasis to pick up Deluxe Speed Grow for it. 80 gold each which is a really good deal considering pierre normally sells it for 150 gold each and he doesn't even sell it until year two and onward so we do spend a little bit of time clearing the farm because we'll need to clear a lot of space eventually for our starfruit crops and sandy's doesn't open until 9 a.m which is why we have a little bit of time to kill we should have killed enough time now i get everything ready I'm going to quickly head to Clint's though because we want to um, get our steel hoe back and we're going to upgrade it one last time to gold tier because day 27, 28 we'll need to hoe a lot of land. It'll be on day 28 where we hoe pretty much every space we need for our starfruit crops and then we're going to plant our parsnip seeds there so that the land stays hoed and once we have our sprinklers the land will also be watered for day one of summer now we're going to the oasis just in time I'm gonna skip skip the little cutscene with sandy and buy her out on her speed grow we're gonna pick up 640 which should use pretty much all of our money if I've calculated it correctly. And looks like I left over a little bit of gold. May have been in case I wanted to take the bus instead of using a warp totem, but then I would have had to wait till 10 a.m. So an hour might not seem like a lot, but an hour is a lot. We're gonna pick up the magic rock candy. We're not going to use it today, we'll probably use it tomorrow, since tomorrow we'll be able to get a full day of mining. Tomorrow's Pierre's birthday, so we will have to miss that, but it's okay. We'll be able to make friends with everybody later. The birthdays I did give gifts for this month were nice and all, but definitely not necessary. We'd rather focus on making profits right now. And spiral floor on floor two, not so lucky. We're gonna definitely skip that. I probably should have mined some of that gold. I am running a little bit low on gold, which is fine because we have been putting it to good use in our mega bombs, but we also will need quite a bit of gold and iron and refined quartz for our quality sprinklers. Now, right now we're just trying to get as far down as possible using our normal strategies of bombing whenever we can whenever there's nice clusters of rocks we're gonna lay down bombs and since i'm saving most of my resources for tomorrow regarding staircases i'm gonna try to skip as few floors as possible and tomorrow i'll be a little bit more generous with the floor skipping the clusters of rocks when we bomb them we're hoping for a hole Hose will allow us to get down really fast, otherwise we're going to be going one floor at a time, which is not ideal. We're making pretty decent progress, 1.20pm. I have got this sped up a bunch. 
Today isn't the most exciting Skull Cavern run. We do get ourselves a good amount of Iridium. We are getting ourselves a nice amount of stuff. But tomorrow, day 26, which is in this video, is going to be a good one. It's not as lucky, per se, as the day 22 run. That run was insane luck with the five prismatic shards. But this run is a lot more lucky in the regard of getting ourselves a lot of iridium ore. I think I get myself nearly 400 iridium ore. But we'll see that very soon. Because we're going pretty fast here. We're on floor 49 already, 4 p.m. We've got ourselves a decent amount of iridium. Blowing up the chunk of rocks. Ignoring the monsters, just trying to get down as fast as possible. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the month of summer in Stardew Valley and what we're going to be doing. So, obviously we're going to have our huge fields of starfruit, but those only take a few days to maintain. Like the first day we plant them, and then after 11 days we'll have a starfruit harvest, and then another 11 days we'll have another starfruit harvest. So, there's only a few days we really have to tend to that, and the rest is left open. We'll definitely try to catch all the summer fish that are unique to summer. We'll definitely do that. We'll complete some community center bundles. We'll also buy some buildings from Robin, such as the coop and the barn, and get a house upgrade just for fun. Also, we'll need the animal products for the community center bundles. Right here we've got ourselves a nice chunk of Iridium. This is a pretty lucky floor right here for floor 69. Got ourselves quite a bit of ore. So that's always nice. And then back to what I was saying. The most important thing that we need to do in the summer is start gathering a lot of wood and oak resin. So to do this effectively, we're going to utilize the space in the northern forest. This area unlocks for us on day two of summer. So we're going to start by planting a lot of trees there. And the pine trees and maple trees we'll just use for wood. And then oak trees that we grow, we'll need to tap for oak resin. Oak resin is used in the kegs as well as wood. So we're going to just need a lot of those. So we have to start farming them as early as possible. So in the fall... And even late summer, we can start turning our starfruit into wine. Because one keg can hold one starfruit, which turns into one wine, and it takes seven days. We're going to have about three harvests of like 640 starfruit. So it's a lot of starfruit to turn into wine. So we're going to need a lot of kegs. We're going to be filling the whole bus stop and like bus tunnel with kegs. It's a good space to utilize for that, so we'll be doing that also. And then for the majority of the summer, we'll be going back into Skull Cavern. So the Skull Cavern dives are a bit repetitive, so I won't show most of them. And the ones that I do show... I'll have them sped up a great deal. If there's anything interesting that happens, I get like a cool item, or there's just a lot of Iridium nodes at once, or just anything unique or interesting, I'll make sure to show it. But just to make a little bit nicer videos, I will speed up and skip over a lot of the Skull Cavern stuff. All of the other important stuff I'm going to try to include, so that'll still be there, and... Summer should go quite a bit faster because we just spend a lot of time in Skull Cavern and doing a lot of repetitive tasks. Before I start commentating over summer videos, I do want to make a big recap video for spring. Just so if anybody isn't interested in watching this whole series, they might want to just watch the recap video. So I will do that. It'll also be just a nice recap of what happened this spring and what the goals are moving forward for this run. So keep an eye out for that, which will be coming after the next video, which will be the end of spring, where we prepare our fields for the starfruit harvests. Right here we got ourselves four iridium bats. That's pretty crazy. I'm going to try to fight them all off at once. Kind of difficult to not take damage, but we do have our pink cakes that we will use to heal. 
If you are interested in seeing the upcoming videos, I do recommend subscribing and I also always appreciate it and I really much appreciate all of the nice comments and suggestions that I've been getting. So those are always very appreciated. So please, as always, feel free to leave a comment. And we're doing a little bit of inventory organizing right now. It is getting pretty late, 11.30. Any time past like 11 or 12 a.m. in Skull Cavern, I start getting like fight or flight sort of mode where I just want to keep getting down. I want to get as much iridium as possible. So you'll see me using a lot more bombs, typically more staircases than I normally would just to get just, just a little bit more iridium because when we're down this far, every floor is going to have a better chance of getting us lots of gains. And you'll see here, we are seeing iridium on almost every floor. And the bigger floors do have a nice amount of nodes. This floor is a perfect example of when I would skip skinny corridors, not a lot of rocks to blow up, no iridium nodes. So, the perfect candidate to skip. And right here, there's not a lot... I. There was a lot of stone nodes there. I definitely should have blew up those stone nodes. That would have been nice. And look at that gold cluster to the right that I just ignore. Again, when it's getting this late, 130, I'm just trying to get down as fast as possible. But that gold, I do need some gold. So I probably should have blew up that gold cluster over there. At 150, there's not much left to do. I can just bomb right here. We do have ourselves one more hole. Looks like we make it to floor 100. Anytime you get a hole and it's like really close to floor 100, if it would put you past floor 100, it'll round that number down to whatever number will put you at floor 100. We level up foraging to level 4. Not too bad. And we're on to the next day. So we got ourselves quite a bit of Iridium Ore from that, which is nice. We have the Magic Rock Handy, which we'll use today. We've got ourselves a good luck day, so that paired with the magic rock candy will be very nice. We'll have we'll, we'll have a pretty good haul today. Now, usually when I'm doing this organizing and going through my chests and whatnot, you'll see me speed it up because there's not too much to see. I'm just really organizing everything. But you'll notice once I do leave my, my house in the morning, I just go straight to the chest, right click as fast as I can. And in between chests, I do the same thing. After closing my inventory or the chest screen, I'll reopen a chest or my inventory really quick. Right here, you'll see how fast I try to eat the food. Like I'm holding down the D key to move to the right as I'm like right clicking with the food just to try to do it as fast as possible. Right here, we're trying to smelt everything. I'm just holding down the right mouse button to get all the ores in. And right after we finish, we're going to switch the totem to our hotbar, again, as fast as possible, and yeah, so we got here at 6.30, not too bad, that's only 30 minutes of the day wasted doing stuff in the morning, so we're going to have pretty much a full skull cavern day, it's about as full as you can get, because there's always a few things you need to do in the morning, because if you don't take care of organizing your inventory it's going to be full and that's no good and we do need to smelt the bars because we're going to need to sell them for the starfruit seeds so that is also a necessary action we have to do in the morning so we're off to a really great start we're already on floor 14 thanks to the hole and the spiral floors we are going to skip I should do a little bit more skipping today since this is our last Skull Cavern dive of this spring. There will be a lot more in the summer, but again, for this spring, this is the last one. A quick note on the stuff I'm bringing to Skull Cavern. You'll see me bring the Iridium Bars because often from some like treasure chests or even slimes and some different enemies, they can actually drop Iridium Bars, so that's why I have those. Obviously the copper, gold, iron all the ores and coal and stone and all that we're gonna get anyway so might as well take some with us especially the stone is important because we want to have a stockpile in case we need to craft staircases and I'll have any healing items I have 
or I'll need to use and the Omni Geodes we're gonna get more so those will stack so really anything that will for sure stack and that can stack up to a high number is good to take and obviously any like individual items that we might need to use like the magic rock handy pretty good luck here we've got ourselves another hole six levels not too bad this floor we're gonna do a quick mega bomb on and get 13 levels from the hole now that's pretty lucky the most you can get is 15 least is three usually ranges somewhere in the middle but so 13 is a pretty lucky amount to get we're gonna probably blow up this mummy here anytime i take the time to kill a mummy i usually will take the time to blow up with a bomb if there's some nice rocks nearby and this is already shaping up to be really nice we're already on floor 42 it's only 9 10 a.m now this run is shaping up pretty nice i do think i make a mistake a little bit down the line you'll see me forget to eat my magic rock candy as early as i should i still end up eating it but it's not around um until like four o'clock when i finally remember to the floors with gold are always nice don't overlook the gold and iron when there's a good amount of them always bomb them when you can because it is our supply of bombs so we have to keep that supply stocked we're gonna ignore that crap grab our loot that we missed and head down to this floor and kill the mummy blow up that iridium ore and while we wait for that bomb to blow up we're gonna head over to that other iridium ore and while that blows up we go mine that rock find the staircase we got to pick up our loot over there still and there was another staircase so pretty convenient a nice amount of iron here again don't overlook the iron make sure you blow up the iron now it looks like I have ran out of my coffee buff which is the plus one speed so yep I go ahead and restore that right now you'll see the bus at the top right the little speed icon and the plus one luck icon the plus one luck and the plus one speed are from the spicy eel a food buff stacks with a drink buff so the only two drinks that i'm aware of are the coffee triple shot espresso those are kind of the same one and then the uh, ginger ale which is a bit newer the ginger ale does plus one luck and then the coffee is plus one speed obviously so the food and the drinks do stack together but you can't have like two of the same as in like you can't have a drink and a drink, so you can't have plus one luck and plus one speed from a coffee and a ginger ale. And then all the different foods, you can't stack any of those with each other. You only have one buff active at a time. And that includes the magic rock candy. It's counted as a food buff. So we do get a prismatic shard there, which is always nice. You'll see me kind of dance around these ghosts here and kite them all at once. That was a pretty bad placement for a bomb. I did blow up the mummy, and we did get lucky with the staircase, but it only blew up a few rocks, so probably not necessary. Probably should have just put a bomb over here um, where the iridium node was in the first place. But we do manage to go down the staircase and get a purple mushroom now. Purple mushrooms are nice, 250 base cell price. But more importantly, they pretty much restore all your health and energy at this state, so that's always nice. A little bit ago, I ate a crab cakes, which does plus one speed and plus one defense. The most important buffs right now is speed, so we still have the plus two speed total, which is good, so we want to keep that. Um, I do think the plus one luck, as opposed to the plus one defense, is a little bit better, so... The spicy eel probably should eat one of those keep that on rather than having the plus one defense because you can always eat more food to heal your health but luck that's something that you can only control by having more luck buffs we're gonna speed up a little bit here mine the iridium fight the bats we have been getting Decent amount of iridium or f just from the bats, which is nice. The burglar's ring definitely helps us there. And it's already 340. And we just remembered to eat the magic rock candy there. 
So the magic rock candy buffs to your speed, defense, attack, luck, and mining. Which the mining buff, I think all that really does for you is it uses less energy when mining rocks and stuff. The attack and defense are always nice. You'll take less damage, you'll deal more damage. And the plus five luck you get from it is insane. Hopefully we'll start to see a lot more Iridium nodes, a lot more staircases faster, just a lot more good stuff. So hopefully it pays off. Now right here, I am doing the pause to think about what I'm doing because there are four serpents coming at me and I end up just swinging downward and hoping for the best. Sometimes that's all you can do because juggling four of them at once, kind of tough to not take damage from any of them. Right here, same sort of idea. We're blocked with a rock, so I have to just wait until I can kill the serpent or else we will get hurt by it a lot. Right here I come close to dying so I have to eat and we're gonna head down the hole. Got seven levels down. Floor 76 now, not too bad. This floor, awful floor. There's not many rocks so I do craft a staircase right here. Best floor. Star floors are always the best. You pretty much guaranteed to get a ladder or a hole or something from just laying a mega bomb in the middle. Now, not always. You can get really unlucky, but with our luck right now, I think it's almost guaranteed. A nice cluster of ore and an emerald right there. Now, most of the regular gemstones, so that being like emeralds, diamonds, rubies, uh, aquamarine, you can trade to the desert trader for various things. You've already seen us do diamonds for triple shots, rubies for spicy eels. Real quick right here you'll see a lot of iridium. It looks like the luck is paying off. And then what we haven't done yet is um, emeralds. I think on Fridays you can trade for cheese, which is okay. I do believe if you're going for selling with a artisan sell bonus on the cheese. It does sell for more than an emerald would. And then the aquamarine to a cloth. I don't think that's worth it. Maybe with the artisan it is, I forget. And then Sundays is the jade for a staircase, which is the best deal because otherwise it's 99 stone, which is a lot of stone. Found ourselves a treasure floor and get ourselves a fancy dark cowboy hat. We're going to put that on right now, mainly for the stylish uh, look, but also pretty practical if we want to keep it because it gives ourselves another inventory space because we didn't have anything on our head to begin with, so why not? Get ourselves another prismatic shard there. We're just rushing through here. Lucky staircase right there after mining an iridium ore node. Otherwise, we'd have to go all the way to the right. And pretty much we're just putting bombs in places where bombs should go and getting down as fast as possible. Once we're past like floor 100, we're going to start to see a lot more iridium nodes. This floor is not terrible. It has a lot of iridium nodes, but again, this floor with like the weird tunnels and stuff, it's kind of awkward to maneuver around and the ore and rocks are a little bit more spread out so you can't like bomb everything at once like some other floors so a lot of the time these floors are good to skip but in our situation right now there is a lot of iridium so we are gonna go ahead and blow most of them up along with the rocks we're gonna blow up the sand as well you'll most likely get clay and sometimes some cave carrots and sometimes some artifacts from them so not too bad decent amount of iridium here quickly blow that up move on this floor sucks but it looks like i am placing a bomb we do get looking at a staircase usually i'll just craft staircase on those ones and we are getting staircases 
pretty often, a lot more often than I normally would. I think it's the magic rock candy's paying off. We'll definitely skip the slime floor. No reason to waste our time killing all the slimes, especially when we're this far down. A nice cluster here to blow up. And again, really lucky with the getting the ladders right away. This is a nice one to skip since it's so big and the halls are short. Floor 100 is always the Mr. Key floor. Another one of these floors, kind of not the most desirable floor layout. Looks like I'm contemplating what to do here. I'm running a little bit low on health, so I ate the purple mushroom. Restores a good chunk of my health. And mine the iridium. If I was smart here, I would probably just craft a staircase, but I end up getting a staircase, so even better. I should mine the ruby. I don't know why I'm mining the ruby. That's a free spice, spicy eel right there, and they don't take long to mine. That's a skippable floor, and get a hole. I should probably just take the hole. I could potentially go for that iridium there right real quick. There's another two nodes down there. It is really hard to weigh out the pros and cons of each floor, whether you should stay on the floor, try to mine all the iridium on the floor, or just go down to the next floor. Because again, the deeper you go, the more iridium you'll get, and with each floor, there's a chance you'll get even more dense clusters of iridium than on the current floor. Like this floor right here, this is a good looking one. Look at all this iridium. This is like the ideal floor. There's just a lot of iridium ore nodes. We're not getting many prismatic shards, but that's okay. We're getting a lot of iridium ore here. We're already up to 450. I forgot how much we started with, but we've gotten well over 300 iridium ore just from this one school cavern dive. Now remember the super lucky run? I think we only got like a little less than 150 iridium ore. So this run right here is making that one seem just not very good. These floors are kind of annoying. I did blow up uh, some rocks just because there was some decent clusters, but a lot of times when I get far down on these floors, I'll craft a staircase, which I do right here. And 1 a.m. for 1.15 now. Mine the iridium, and I will likely craft a staircase. I might go down a little bit, see if there's anything good. I will try to get a staircase from using a bomb on the or nodes and I do get one. I do get a treasure chest floor. Five mega bombs. Not the best because we just craft those, but still free mega bombs. Nothing to complain about. We'll use them right here. And also have to fend off the serpents. I do have a nice block right there. And I was actually a clean taking out of the serpents. I didn't really take much damage from them. I will bomb the iridium on this floor since there are a decent amount of chunks here. It is 130, so I should get down that staircase and see if there's any more like large amounts on any floors. This may be the last floor though. I ignore that iridium because I'm running out of time. 140. I have an option here. I can either mine that node right there or craft a staircase and try my luck. Looks like I am crafting a staircase. And I get pretty unlucky here. Just one more iridium node. Looks like 150. We're gonna craft one more staircase, I think. And then that is the end of this dive. We ended with 504 iridium ore, minus the 124 we started with. Nuts us at 380 iridium ore just from this dive alone. That's pretty good. All that ore going to be smelted into bars. We're going to sell all of those so we can afford the starfruit seeds, which in the next video, we're going to prepare our fields to plant 640 starfruit seeds in summer.
So thanks for watching. If you're interested in the next video, please consider subscribing and goodbye.